some studies in a little report from Massachusetts. I'm going to one copy of this. Yes, one copy of this, and then I'm going to pass out the assessment summary for what's in one of those. Since it's much shorter. <laughs> Absolutely. Members for hearing my testimony today. This um, bill is proposing to switch to Atlantic time zone and opt out of daylight savings time. Um, some other states have tried to go to daylight savings time all year round, like Florida and California, but it would take an act of Congress for that to be allowed, and so switching time zones, not being out of daylight savings time, would essentially have that same effect without needing an act of Congress, which may not come very soon. But the benefits have been demonstrated of doing so, so moving uh, sooner rather than later is preferred. Um, in 2017, uh, Massachusetts did a, a special commission on the Commonwealth's time zone. I gave an entire copy of that report to the chair and gave you all uh, the executive summary um, of what they found in that commission. Um, they found increases in economic growth, productivity, decreases in on-the-job injuries, and reduced severity of on-the-job injuries. Um, reduce traffic fatalities, heart attacks, energy costs, and greenhouse emissions. Um, the concerns that they had with switching was if one state did it, they would be the traffic and, and interstate commerce between those states would be a problem. And so they recommended um, going as a group of states. So this proposal will, will move New Hampshire to Atlantic time zone when Massachusetts and Maine also agree to, to make that move. So we wouldn't be doing it independently. We're taking that recommendation to move as a group. Um, so, uh, so there have been lots of demonstrated issues with, with um, the lack of sleep or sleep deprivation or um, Seasonal affective disorder, um, those happen all over the country when we switch from daylight savings time and back and forth. But New Hampshire has an additional, and, and our region has an additional issue because we essentially go into um, an evening commute, which is in the dark, which other states, like um, even in, in the, in the Eastern time zone, like Florida and stuff like that, when they fall back in November, 
or they are still falling back at a time that is 5.30 um, sunset. And so they are still having that commute during the day, in daylight, which um, some of the um, studies which I gave to, to the chairman show that, that uh, the daylight commute increases, um, reduces the amount of uh, accidents with animals because they're more active at night um, and it's harder to see them, also with pedestrians, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, there is significant benefits to wildlife, to, to um, reduce car accidents, to a great number of things. Um, one of the, the issues that was suggested and, and drawbacks could be if school time still started very early in the morning and um, before the sun rose. And so the commission found that they would recommend that schools have a start time of no later than 8.30 in the morning. And there are um, s studies that show that, that having later start times is more effective for children anyways. So that I would definitely recommend, but I wouldn't, I did not put that in the bill as a requirement that schools start at a specific time. I just think that it would be um, something that, the, that couldn't be expressed to, to uh, superintendents and districts and, and that they can make their, the choice that's best for them and their situation based on their school and district. Um, this is really a bipartisan issue. Um, Massachusetts uh, has a bill in this year, which is, which is um, proposed by a Democratic senator. Um, I believe that the representative from uh, Connecticut gave you testimony regarding this. He uh, is a Republican, and so it's, it's really, the benefits are, are really shown, and, and people just want to move um, because of, this, of seeing those benefits. So um, I definitely think that we should um, indicate that we would like to join Massachusetts and Maine in this endeavor, and, um, and I ex would be happy to answer any questions. For the record, I received an email yesterday from Senator Hennessy, uh, he represented Goliath, and ran to explain that I was inadvertently listed by OLS as a co-sponsor of uh, House Bill 567, which you will be hearing. It was too late for them to remove my name when I learned that I was listed as a co-sponsor. I'm not taking a position on this bill, but I do want you to know that I had no intention of being listed as a co-sponsor. So just for the record, that was received, and I know OLS has had problems with sponsors on bills because I know I've been dropped on a few and other people have as well. Mm -hmm. So that's just for the record and questions. And I'd like to thank my friend for, for taking the questions that we're going to about to throw on you. So as you mentioned Massachusetts and Connecticut, I, I did a little research um, and it appears that other New England states have legislation that's filed similar to this in the sense of if this state does this and this state does that, we're going to do this. Right. As it does say in, in this legislation, if right. Mass was in Massachusetts and Maine agree, Absolutely. then New Hampshire will follow suit. But it seems like with all the New England states all using similar language, would it be, and I don't even know, I don't even know how you could go down this road, but it, would it make sense to you to for it seems like the six New England states have to have a get together and, and have a commission, not just New Hampshire have one and to, to look at this and Maine to look at the. You see what I'm getting at? Would, um, would it make more sense that the six New England states get together and come up with something unilaterally? Um, I'm not sure that another commission would be advised, as I stated in, in my written testimony, because. The commission was is just there to find out the information and and research on the studies, and you, you can uh, 
get a copy of it and look at all of the footnotes, the research isn't going to change. It's just whether or not a specific state wants to be in or out of that. Um, and, and most of the, these proposals are based on who they have most economic and trade ties with. So, so um, Connecticut doesn't include New Hampshire in theirs, and Massachusetts, Massachusetts does. And um, so um, a lot of what I've heard is that a lot, of, a lot of people have economic ties with Massachusetts. So they seem to all just require that Massachusetts make the move. If, if Massachusetts makes the move, then other, other states will follow, including states like um, Vermont. Massachusetts' proposal this year does not include Vermont. But I would find it very unlikely that if Massachusetts moved, that Vermont wouldn't consider doing the same, even though I don't think that they've ever proposed um, moving to Atlantic time zone. But, uh, and so I think that having a commission to decide, even if all, all of the, let's say, all of the states except for Massachusetts decided that they didn't want to, Massachusetts decides that they want to, I think that that will change the, the um, cost-benefit analysis mm -hmm. of not being on that, um, especially since all of our TV stations, a lot of the TV stations come out of there, and they would be um, advertising, hey, we're not changing our times time clock back, and that might be confusing to other people in this area. And so I think that <clears throat> as long as we stick with the contingency that Maine, that w when Maine moves, we move, uh, that, that uh, it will be beneficial. I don't think that we need to necessarily um, agree that, that Vermont does it if we're doing it kind of a thing um, because we have such strong ties with Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Sure. So. Okay, just a quick follow up. So, so then with the way that this is, with, with the way that this is written as it, as it ties the decision making of the state of New Hampshire to decision making in essence of Maine and Massachusetts. Right. Um, with, with what you're saying here is that in a, if I'm getting you right, that Massachusetts is holding all the cards here, in essence, because everybody seems to be tied to the decision of Massachusetts to go to the Atlantic time zone or not, and then the dominoes seem to fall after? Yes. Okay. And so, so um, the proposal for, from Massachusetts this year does include New Hampshire and Maine and Rhode Island. And so sure. they did not include Connecticut or Vermont. And so... Um, we wouldn't necessarily want to be left behind. Um, right. And, and it, I think that with the evidence of the commission's um, report, I think that it's, it's clear that we could indicate, yes, we've seen the, the evidence and we agree with your, your findings on this. All right. Is that fancy? Thank you. This has been a confusing subject for many, many years how it started, when it started, why it started, etc. I get that we're trying to change two things. We're trying to move out of our current Eastern Standard Time to Atlantic Time, and we're trying to do away with daylight saving stuff. Right? And we can't just opt out of daylight saving time. No, no we can't. We can opt out of daylight savings time. What, what this is essentially proposing is to have daylight savings all year round. Because, um, which is not currently allowed by the, by the federal government. And so by switching time zones and opting out of daylight savings time for a majority of the year, nine months of the year, we would be the exact same time as the um, Eastern time zone. It would only affect when the, the other states fall back. Thank you, Chair. Um, thanks for testifying. Absolutely. So, moving to a length time zone does not prohibit the state also doing daily second time. Correct. So, we, so therefore, is that you could have a situation within New England, 
if they all go together, one take an opt-in and the other take a time. Let's still put it that way. There's nothing to guarantee they're all going to be in the same time zone, if you will, year-round. Even though we're in the same time zone, in the like time zone here, doesn't mean the state within that block would opt for daily savings time themselves. So in the future, yes, they would be a, I mean, it would be legal for them to opt into daylight savings time and be an entire hour always ahead of Eastern, Eastern uh, time zone that is opt into daylight savings time. That is a possibility, but the, I'm not sure that it would be beneficial um, only because of the, the way the sun works. So, <laughs> so <laughs> just, it's possible. <laughs> is always in their own time zone. They don't fall back and they don't fall forward. I mean, go forward, right? They always stay in. They don't use, they don't change time. Indiana, I, I, there's, the ones that I am aware of yeah. are Hawaii yeah. and Arizona. I'm, I didn't check Indiana okay. to I, say I they believe, opt out. I think, I, I think that they have, but let's just use the example okay. of this, you're in, you, you have a business trip in Indiana. Okay. And you fly into, and we're going to pretend that we're in Indiana. So New Hampshire, well, let's just use the example that New Hampshire is never going to change the time zone. They're going to stay in this Atlantic time. So in the, we don't change, we don't follow this, you know, fall back, spring forward. Thing. Yeah. So if somebody has a, has a visit, an appointment in New Hampshire, 